What is up, Cam Fam? How are you guys doing? Hopefully, you guys are doing well. And in today's video, I'm a, I'm officially doing my wheel reveal and my suspension reveal. It's gonna look like a completely different car. So I'm gonna try my best not to get my wheels in here because I don't want you guys to see it just yet until we get my suspension done. I am collaborating with my dad. He actually is filming for his channel as well. His uh, channel is called The Dutchman and The Digger. I'll pop his channel in here somewhere. So he's actually doing a video with it uh, as well. So I'm sure once he gets his video up, I'll post it on my social media. But uh, today, like I said, we are doing the suspension, lowering it. We do have some Eibach Pro lowering kit. I'll show you guys right here. My buddy actually gave this to me for free, not to brag or anything, but he said he wasn't using it. So he was like, oh, you can just have it. I'm not using it. But it is made for the turbo edition, so it may be a little different. It may not be because I've been told that some parts for the turbo Mazda Speed can be direct bolt-on. But my dad was saying something about like maybe it being a different suspension ratio. Can you explain to the viewers again why it was yeah, why the, it might be different? The weight is going to be different on this car compared to the turbo, so he may end up being taller in the front, shorter, or lower in the front. We'll know more and we'll be able to adjust that. Uh, I'm from the automotive industry retired after 25 years at, no 28 years at one place and just been in the industry forever so uh we'll get going on this and uh see what we find all right guys without further ado let's get into it okay so we got one wheel off and what my dad said you want to do is for this setup and style you want to take this bolt off then there's a clip that holds your you said that was your abs or your the brake line there's a clip here that is some i think my dad moved oh this it sits in just like this and you want to pry it out and that just holds it right there so you want to pry that out then you want to take this bolt out right there there it is you take this bolt out and so that's what we're going to be working with next Okay, so we've got that big 17 millimeter bolt out. And uh, one thing I forgot to mention too is, uh, in the last clip, is you wanna unplug your ABS sensor so that way it, uh, you don't mess anything up because if you damage your anything with the ABS, your ABS system is messed up and you gotta spend loads of money on that to get it fixed. It's not Imagine fun. if you hit the ABS, or I should say the, the wire from the harness. Yeah, so. Now, what is our next step? I heard you do your clip, uh, I don't really know. The steering knuckle to slide off the bottom of the strut. Instead of a nice easy setup, they do a setup where this slides down inside instead of just sliding over the edge with a couple pinch bolts. So one thing I forgot to mention in the very beginning is uh, before you get started, you wanna knock two of the bolts loose on top, leaving one on the top because what that does is it'll hold the whole shock in place once you knock this down so once you knock this down it'll be easy to get the shot uh, the strut out so after you knock that down you can just push up on this reach up with your hand get this one out there it is there's that one i'll just put that right there don't pull on the engine bay be careful of your wires if there's any in the way and then that's that and your whole strut is out Okay, so now that we got the strut out, you obviously want to get it in a spring compressor because it'll make life a lot easier and safer. If you don't have a spring compressor, it'll be very, very bad and very, very dangerous. Do not recommend doing it. It could be fatal. So uh, now that we got the strut in a spring compressor, my dad's going to give you some information because, like I said, he knows more about suspension stuff. So I'm going to let him give you all the details. So, Dad, go ahead. Okay, so before you remove the top nut, which just allows everything to just explode apart, which is extremely dangerous. Don't do it, as Cameron mentioned. I use a clamshell compressor. You have bench-mounted ones where you set the whole thing up. It's usually on a post or a rolling cart or on a bench. Very safe, but not as easy to store, and I don't have a lot of room here. So when you're compressing them, you want to be fairly close to the middle, meaning top to bottom. Same with the back, both sides. Try to keep the distance here and the distance on this side, because sometimes, like on this one, I could grab it here 
and here, but then this side be more compressed and it's gonna cause the spring to make this weird arch once I have it off or while I'm compressing it. We gotta compress it far enough where the spring is off the bottom perch or off the top strut plate. That'll let you know that you've compressed it far enough and the danger is, well, it's much less. You still have, it's kind of like when it's compressed, it's like a loaded hand grenade pin out. You want to be careful with it. As you saw while I was compressing it, this was coming down. The spring was shrinking. We got room between the spring and the top plate. We are good enough. Now I can safely remove this nut without any surprises. But I always kind of stay back, don't get my face in the way or anybody at either end, because if something goes sour, it's bad. Sweet. Okay, so now we have basically our live grenade. As soon as that nut comes off the top of the strut, if something happens to this bolt here, the top of the head, anything, things can go sour, and it's not a good thing. So I like to unload them as fast as possible. Now the process of putting the springs in, the lowered ones, is reverse of this. Put the new spring here, compress it down, put the strut through it, put the nut on, tighten it down, put the strut back in the car. Okay, so one thing that my dad was mentioning that I, I, I'm sure I would have uh, learned it as I was doing it if I didn't have my dad with me, but it's called timing the strut. And basically what you got to do is uh, when you take the spring, you see the end of the spring here, you want to line it up and make it go to the end and make it touch that. I'm sorry if I'm sounding ridiculous, but it's just the only way I know how to explain it, but. Something, something new to you, if you get it off like this, that puts a whole lot of stress on the spring that isn't being supported. So it's just hang dangling there and it actually won't drop it as far as it could because now you have that extra half inch which will transfer into that suspension. One is sitting straight there and there's also a spot in the upper strut plate, you can kind of just plan on where, they actually have done this nicely. That little tab there will let you know that's where the end of the strut spring should sit. We're just gonna make sure that tab is lined up close to the end of that. And on this one, we don't even have to use a spring compressor. Well, that makes life a lot easier. So now the nuts back on the top, strut is timed into the bottom spring plate and it's correct with the top spring on the strut plate. You don't want the strut itself to spin the shaft because that'll burn up stuff inside so you try to hold it as best you can. Oh, okay. Okay, now it's just a simple process of putting this back in. And with this one not having studs on the top strut plate it makes it a pain because you have to look while holding the strut line up the hole, grab the bolt, get it through the hole before the strut moves, and get the thread started. How's that going for you? I forgot this has to be towards the front. There we go. This is not fun. Oh, there we go. I got it lined up. Now it can be fun. Oh, maybe not. Let's see, how quick did I do it a minute ago? <laughs> Took me like five, ten seconds at the most. You see the difference is my dad has 30 plus years in the automotive industry. <laughs> I don't have that much, so... Cut me some slack. I may have to speed this clip up. It may be here all day. We don't have all day. Oh look, I can see the grass growing. <laughs> all right. So yeah, we actually had to drop the strut back down, rotate the strut plate to line up properly because when I was tightening the top of the strut and tightening the nut back down, it spun the top strut plate. Made it a little harder. <laughs> okay, progress has been made. So uh, last clip you saw was me struggling to get those three damn bolts in. So after you get those in, um, you wanna obviously do the reverse of what you did when you took it apart. So you wanna get the bottom of the strut back into the knuckle. And when you do that, one thing that my dad said, uh, that my dad mentioned to make life a lot easier that I would have never thought of is get the jack, put it underneath the ball joint? Yeah. Ball joint, lift it up and that will, cause if you, if you don't have anything pulling it up or helping you, you're gonna be struggling. You're not, you're not gonna pull it up by hand. So you get then, the jack, jack it up, and it puts it up in there for you, so then, You know yeah. the strut's fully installed when the Oops. knuckle and this little plate that's mounted to the strut come together right at that junction right there. This one wasn't actually all the way in when we started before we took it apart, so 
if it ain't all the way in, you're not gonna get the maximum out of your drop kit. So there's that. Now, we put the bolts back in, put the front wheel on and uh, go, to the other side. go to the other side. So yeah, like I said, I'm not gonna film us doing the other side because everything should be relatively the same. If anything is different or something happens, I'll obviously document that and show you guys, but everything should be relatively the same. And then once we get to the back, I'll film the back. Uh, so there's that. So let's get everything put back together. Okay, now that we're on the other side, I totally forgot to mention something when we were on the other side. Uh, actually, my dad just brought it to my attention, but I'll let him explain the details. But I just thought I'd let you guys know, once your strut is out, your axle and everything, all your components is going to want to naturally tilt out. And what you don't want to have happen is have it come all the way out because that'll damage your internals to the axle. And this is where my dad's going to come in and explain the actual technical parts. So what? tell them the reason why. So in here, it's going to want to kind of pull apart if you stretch it. And the bearings in the cage will separate, drop in the bearings sometimes or just pull clear out. And sometimes pull the boot off the inner tri... They call this the tripod or... Um, and then if you can, you can put them back together. It's not that great. It's fun to do. Or you end up replacing the axle. So just keep the top of this strut pivoting out when you're pushing down. Or if it's a double or double pinch bolt style where it separates, you have to pull them out a little bit. But you can only go so far and be safe. Yeah, so when you're pulling it, make sure you push down and not out. So that's what I was doing. I was kind of pulling out. My dad said, don't do that. Just push down. So what I did is I just put my hand on the hub right here and just push down. It moves fairly easy. It doesn't really tilt that much but if you put enough force on it it will tilt and cause damage so don't do that okay front is complete i had about oh i just spit fruit pardon me <laughs> um front is complete i had about three inches of wheel gap um i had my wheels covered because i don't want to reel my wheels just yet but uh, i had about three inches of uh, wheel gap before the kit uh, as you saw in the photo in the beginning or the before photo so we're gonna drop it see how much uh, it closed the gap up. So I'm gonna do one side and that's gonna match my speed and we're gonna see just how low it dropped it. Wow, yeah, that really dropped it. Holy cow. I have, uh, what do you think, about an inch wheel gap now? Uh, inch and a half, I got major, I'll do this side real quick. That looks really good okay so now we've got the rear taken off and uh, the rears actually are going to be way easier because they don't have a strut in the middle so we just have three bolts to work with or one bolt to work with which is right here and then everything just drops and you just take the spring out okay so progress has been made we got that one bolt out that i was telling you about I'm gonna try and get underneath there so you can see what we're working with now and I'll let my dad explain what we're working with. So basically, it's dropped down as far as it can and it's being held in tension by the sway bar and that's where I'm gonna let my dad come in and explain what he's doing. So this is what we're working with. Dad, go ahead and explain what. So this arm needs to come down further to release the spring out of the pocket here. The problem is the sway bar over here isn't allowing the control arm to swing down as I figured. So I'm gonna use the spring compressor to compress the spring down far enough to get it out of here. If that doesn't work, we're gonna have to go over here, release the other end of the control arm and get it out. And probably have to disconnect the sway bar also. It's either that or we go to the other side, take the bolt out of the control arm and allow both sides to swing down at the same time. That's just a better idea. We might do that. Let's try this one. So we may have ran into a little bit of an issue. Uh, the ball. that we took out on the other side is kind of seized up on this side and maybe stuck for a little bit. Uh, explain to the viewers why it might have seized up and what would cause that. Got it. Oh, 
rust. Uh, just over time? Yep. Oh, we got it now, so I guess back to recording. Hi, a bit of an update. We didn't get much progress done because the bolt that I showed you that we took out on this side, that one, that goes right in that hole. That other side is basically being a complete pain in the ass and it's not letting up because there's a rubber bushing sleeve inside that's holding it up. So I'm going to let my dad describe what's or explain what's going on. So go ahead and explain what the, okay. what's going on. To get the bolt out, which has been wet from rain, you know, Northwest here we get that rain thing. Um, bolt's got to come out of here, allowing the control arm to drop. The bushing that the bolt goes through, which is here, has a metal sleeve on the outside that presses into this arm. And then there's rubber. And the rubber is vulcanized, which basically means rubber welded, basically, to the metal outer sleeve and the middle sleeve. What happens is all the moisture gets in here, gets between the bolt and that metal sleeve, and locks these two components together. I got the bolt finally broke loose, sprayed a bunch of penetrating oil here, sprayed it on the other side, worked the bolt in and out, back and forth, trying to get as much lube between this and the sleeve. And what eventually happened, which is usually what happens, is this metal sleeve started spinning because it's locked on the bolt so bad that it detached from the rubber. And now we have no way to get it back out. I was able to get it back in and I can tighten it back down, which sort of fixes the problem. But now the bushing will eventually wear out faster because it's no longer vulcanized together. Hopefully we can figure out a uh, solution sooner than later. <laughs> but I, you know what? I'm starting to think I'm going to blame you for this one because I don't know if I got in the clip, but my dad, huh, this is, this is, the rules are going to be easier. <laughs> Look who jinxed us now. <laughs> so I'll get back with you guys once we figure out a uh, solution. So something to show you guys is, you know, at the beginning, my dad was mentioning how if you don't get it aligned right in the compressor, it'll make a weird arch bow shape. Well, as you can see, you can slightly see it's kind of bowing like this. That means he's not far enough this way. Or, oh, this way, sorry. So if he goes further that way, it'll straighten that arch out like that. So it'll compress more straight than it is now. So we, uh, by the way, if you couldn't tell, we finally got this side out, but it was only because we were had to pry on the sway bar and my dad had to pry using that, that little pry bar on the bottom of this uh shock spring but that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to be able to get this in easier okay sorry i cut the my dad was trying to talk so go ahead tell him what you were going to say what i doing on this side since i can't get this damn bolt out is i pulled the top of the shock down or disconnected it so that i'm able to get some movement out of it and i'm sure it's going to make it a pain in the butt to get this one out but we're going to find out we're doing the easy side first <laughs> Okay, progress. We got the spring in, and now the issue is we gotta try and rotate the spring that way. So, um, I'll let my dad explain a little bit what, where, why so the spring has to rotate. Is, the end of the spring is clear over here. The end of the spring needs to end in this little pocket right here. Plus, the spring itself is not in fully to the control arm where it sits into the seat. So we're gonna use some pliers, pry bars, maybe some vice grips, see if we can rotate it and pop it over. I can get it popped over, no problem. It's just getting it rotated under pressure. We'll see. All right, that's one side done. Well, now. Got something, we gotta finish. Yeah, we gotta tighten the bolt, but I meant as far as getting one spring in, we got one side almost completed. So the other side is gonna be such a pain in the butt to do, but we, we should figure tricks. it out. Huh? Now we have tricks. Yeah. All right. Let's get everything put back together. Get the wheel on. Yay, progress. We, big progress. Big progress. progress. We, uh, huh? Say Let the this people know we got it. Now. Yeah, this is where we're at now. So we uh, were able to get it out. 
We learned all uh, the secrets from the other side. <laughs> uh, basically, I had to put the big ass pry bar in there. We got the OE spring out, as you can see. And now, what's that? Of the difficult side. Yeah, of the difficult side. So we managed to just forget about that stupid bolt that was giving us a headache and uh, we went about it a different approach. So now we're just putting the spring compressor on and uh, I don't know if I filmed the us doing the other side and how we did it, but basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the uh, spring compressor on it. It's gonna banana it, uh, bow it, arch it, whatever you wanna call it, uh, which in my opinion might make it a little bit easier. So that way you have one side that's shorter, make it slide in and then you can just straighten it out. But uh, that's how we did the other side. So now on to trying to put it in. We got the spring in. Now we gotta get the tool out. Tool out. I'm trying to come up with some ideas. Can you guys help us? Write down in the comments what we can do. Mm. <laughs> <Cutting board. laughs> yeah. Alright, back at it. All right, we got the spring aligned and in. So now, you gotta put everything back together, put the wheel on, torque the wheels, and uh, finally be able to do the whole reveal. Can't wait to show you guys, it'll be pretty cool. So, everything back on. Next time you see me, after I cut this clip, is I'll be doing the reveal of the whole entire wheels and suspension. All right guys, see you in a sec. Wow, holy cow. This looks magnificent. As you guys saw in the before photo, before we dropped it, it was pretty high up. I'll put the before picture here uh, so you guys have one more look. And now I will do the official wheel reveal and suspension. All right, guys, enjoy. Alright guys, that concludes today's video. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video on the work that we did. Hopefully you guys enjoy the wheels. Uh, there may be some uh, wrap and talks in the future, maybe in the near future. Uh, I was planning on wanting, or I was wanting to plan on wrapping it, but then I was like, nah, don't really want to. And then someone was uh, talking to me about maybe possibly getting some wrap done. So we're still figuring some plans out. Maybe it might be in the near future. I don't know. We'll see. But hopefully your plans fall into place. And uh, that would be cool if we could get that done. So major progress done on the car. I'm very happy with how it turned out. I wasn't planning on want, doing anything to it. And maybe just keeping it stock. And then my dad was like, huh. Brought something to my attention. You know, he's like, I think this would be good content for your channel. And, you know, just there's more videos for you to put on your channel. So I was like, why not? So got the wheels. And then... Uh, was planning on just keeping the wheels doing the wheels on my car wasn't planning on doing suspension and then it's like why not and then i got some suspension given to me so everything just fell into place so hopefully the same will fall into place with uh some wrap and we'll see what happens i don't have too much more to throw at you so hopefully you guys enjoyed the video please leave a thumbs up please don't forget to subscribe check out my other videos if you guys are new to my channel um Anyways, with that being said, I will catch you guys in the next video. So, peace.